I'm happy to come to speak to you today for the next couple of hours and talk about uh, basically hollow structural sec sections uh, as composite columns. Now I will be focusing on hollow structural sections themselves. This does also apply to uh, box, built up box sections. So if you take four plates and weld them at the, the corners, uh, you, you build, you know, obviously build a box there. And that filled with concrete does also fo follows these guidelines that I'm um, going to go through today. This seminar was developed with uh, the Steel Tube Institute, and uh, as such, Force um, serves the Force Consulting. That uh, is an engineering company, and we serve as the technical consultants to the Steel Tube Institute. Uh, but this was originally developed uh, with, uh, in conjunction with them. Before I get into uh, the actual composite, uh, I just want to sort of take a little step back to the beginning of AISC. And the first AISC manual came out in 1928. And what you see here is just an image of all of those manuals. On the left-hand side, there's all the ASD manuals, uh, starting from the first edition uh, through the uh, ninth, the very popular ninth edition. On the right were the three LRFD manuals, uh, which you know weren't necessarily quite as widely used. It, then in 2005, uh, the AISC merged the two methods, the ASD and LRFD, into one method and updated the ASD's uh, design provisions and released the uh, 2005 specification and the 13th edition steel construction manual. The more recent manual that uh, is in circulation is the f uh, 14th edition, uh, which just continues to, uh, you know, in, in that method of combined ASD and LRFD. And as I go through the um, seminar today, you'll see certain places where we're talking, mostly I focus on the nominal strength, and the nominal strength is the same uh, regardless of whether you're using the ASD or LRFD method, uh, you would just then to get to the what they call the available strength or the actual strength uh, or sometimes the allowable strength for ASD or the design strength uh, term is used for LRFD, uh, you would apply a fee factor to the nominal strength for LRFD or an omega factor uh, for ASD. Uh, at any rate, uh, the, 15, the 14th edition uh, has been out since for uh, some time now and uh, it's, there was also in 1997 an HSS connections manual. That again was uh, an LRFD manual and focused on uh, obviously the connections and design procedures uh, specific to HSS. Those uh, requirements and um, the uh, code requirements were included also in the 2005 AIC specification. The most recent uh, AIC manual uh, looks something like this. I think it's a little darker. They just uh, kind of debuted it, uh, what it will look like at the recent uh, NASCC conference. Uh, but this will be the 15th edition, and it is kind of a throwback to the 6th uh, edition, uh, kind of hidden back here. Um, uh, actually, the seventh edition, excuse me, the seventh edition ASD is kind of a throwback to that. And the reason I bring that up, um, just sort of as, as uh, a bit of interesting news about steel design, uh, I'll also um, highlight some of the changes that have been made in the new AISC specification that uh, has been released as well. You can download that for free on their website. So the seminar really is still based on the, the 2010 version of the AISC specification. Uh, because that's what you know we'll be using for the next few years. However, uh, I did want to highlight and point out some of the things that have changed uh, as you'll go forward. So when we're talking about composite members, uh, really looking at composite columns or beam columns. So I indicate here that there's two types of composite members. In really reality, there is really a third very common type, which is a beam that is composite with a slab on top. We won't be discussing that configuration. Uh, that's that's sort of a very um, its own topic. And neither will we be talking about encased composite members. Um, there is a design guide that AISC has published, number six, that deals specifically with uh, encased. Uh, wide flange members uh, that also have reinforcement. So uh, again, we're focusing on filled composite members. Mostly uh, I'll be talking from the point of view of HSS members, uh, but it would also apply to a box section. 
So the two things that we will be discussing are the steel strength or the bare steel strength of, of simply the steel member. Uh, when we look at the composite member requirements, we find that we don't have to take a strength less than the steel member itself. So that becomes part of the calculation when determining the strength of a composite member.